Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Wednesday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing wonderful out there this morning, having a fantastic start to your day, and I hope you all are having a great week out there so far. Appreciate y'all folks tuning in this morning as we try to figure out what's going to happen weather-wise for today, and we will talk about a, a couple features out there that's worth discussing and just discuss the entire lower 48. But a good chunk of the video will go towards giving you guys updated information about this storm system coming for this weekend. We're expecting a severe weather risk, a lot of rain, a lot of winds, and uh, somebody's going to get the potential for a lot of snow. So we're going to continue to fine tune these details, get you guys updated information. We'll do another video this evening. We'll be pumping out two videos a day for the foreseeable future. And just to get you guys the updated information per the model guidance that continues to come in all day and all night. So there will be timestamps up in this video. If you do not care about the weather for today, don't blame you one bit. There's not a whole lot going on, but just skip ahead to the portion of the video where we talk about the storm system for this weekend. Definitely utilize those timestamps. So with that being said, if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, please put it in the comments below so I can pray over it and so others can do so too. Thanks for the growth lately. Uh, it seems like the channel's picked up some steam as far as the views and subscribers. So welcome to any new subscribers. This channel's a little different. It's a family type atmosphere. The videos are a little bit longer. We get very detailed. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank y'all for choosing this channel to view. Let's get rocking and rolling this morning. So we'll talk about what's going on right now, right at this moment, we'll start off by looking at the wider vapor loop. So if you notice wider colors on your screen, that indicates more moisture in the atmosphere, kind of more dull colors, the grayer colors, that's more dry air. And if you notice all this moisture is kind of going up into the Pacific Northwest, goes all the way up into Canada, and then it comes screeching all the way back down. And then it kind of goes like this and then shoots off into the Atlantic. Why does it do that, you ask? Well, there's a ridge of high pressure that is in the process of moving across the western U.S. This will eventually kind of flatten out somewhat, uh, become a little bit more broad, and be basically anchored over the entire central portion of the country. So it's on its way of moving this way. Uh, it'll kind of shrink somewhat, and then eventually our big storm system will enter the picture, which... I mean, I say another storm system, but you guys are already been dealing with stormy conditions and just a whole lot of rain, higher elevation snow, basically over the last week for the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies, and we will continue to do so throughout today. But another storm system will enter the picture here in the next couple of days, really the next day, honestly, and then scoot down to the south and then become a pretty powerful storm system. But this is what's going on right now. A little bit of troughing over the eastern U.S. with energy associated with it. This is popping off some northwest flow snow across the Appalachian Mountains, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But we'll get this back off your screen and keep moving along here. We'll talk about what's actually falling out there right now. Most of the country is quiet. The Pacific Northwest continues to not be quiet. A lot of rain continues to fall, but it looks like this energy will be more cold energy, if that makes any sense. The snow levels will begin to drop again, and this moisture will begin to scoot a little bit further south. Therefore, more areas of like Northern California and just more of the Central Rockies will begin to get a lot more moisture over the next one to two days. But it continues to rain in Seattle and basically the same areas that have seen rain over the last few days weak in some cases. Um, you're still getting that higher elevation snow and there's even the southern Appalachian Mountains. I'm sure some uh, a couple inches have added up in some of these higher elevations. I know uh, quite a few people up there in the North Carolina and Tennessee mountains and you know they've been sending videos uh, throughout social media. It's really awesome to see. And even if it's not snowing at my house, you guys know I love snow. Uh, I live here in Central South Carolina. It's still awesome to see snow anywhere else and definitely always tag me on social media and the snow pictures, the snow videos. I love to see it. It definitely makes me smile. There's still energy over the Northeast and this is falling in the form of some light rain, maybe some snow flurry action. And I think there is the potential for some festive flakes throughout the day, even all the way to the I-95 corridor, all the way down to New York City, Long Island. We'll talk about that in this video. And then we have another area of energy that's going to move out of Canada over the Great Lakes region into southern Ontario eventually overnight tonight and deliver another round of some snow for areas in the mid-Atlantic and kind of the southern New England, northeast 
region. So this is what's going on right now. The middle of the country, pretty quiet. Storm Prediction Center today, just a general risk of thunderstorms in western Oregon areas of northern California. No severe weather risk today, so we don't have to deal with that. The excessive rainfall outlook, not as big of a flood risk today than it has been over the last couple days, only a marginal risk, which means there's at least a 5% risk of flash flood guidance being met in these green areas. I don't think this will be as big of a deal today, thankfully. Watches, warnings, advisories, flood watches continue to be in effect for you folks in Washington, Western Oregon, areas of California, and of course the higher elevations have winter weather advisories are now up all the way into the northern Sierra Nevada. We have some high wind warning, high wind watches up for areas of the Rockies in Colorado and then into southeast Wyoming. A couple winter weather advisories up for the higher elevations, the Rockies of Montana, and we will and we continue to have the winter weather advisories up for areas of the Appalachian Mountains of West Virginia, Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, even Maryland. Let me know what you're seeing up there if you're tuning in for the hot, with, uh, from the high country or just the higher elevations of the Appalachian Mountains. I would love to hear the reports and just what's falling out there. So let's talk about the Southeast first. And, you know, we'll probably scoot through this pretty quick. There's not a whole lot going on today. There really isn't besides the Western U.S., but even the Western U.S., not quite as active um, as we've seen as far as the risk for flash flooding. But southeast today, you will continue to have some waves of moisture that will press up. We call this an upslope flow against these higher elevations of Tennessee, North Carolina. And you'll continue just to see some snowfall throughout the morning. I think this will taper off a little bit later this afternoon. Um, and then we get into this afternoon. Some rain showers are possible. Maybe a little sleet mixes in with some of this in the Delmarva area. Would not be surprised one bit. Not a big deal. But we get into this evening. Then we get into the overnight hours. Then we get into tomorrow morning. And I mean, it, there's not a whole lot going on. We'll talk about this blue on the top of your screen here in a second. But it, it'll be pretty quiet in the southeast today. Besides the Appalachian Mountains, if you live higher up, some flurries could be flying around. And if you get like three, 4,000 feet up or higher, there could be snow on the ground. And I even saw areas like around 2,500 feet, it was snowing. So up here in the Northeast, it'll be kind of a festive day. Uh, I've heard a couple people say, I, I like that term. We call it festive flurries, some fl festive flakes, meaning, you know, it's Christmas time, a little, little uh, snowflake action ongoing. Let me know what you're seeing south of, south of Boston right now. I would love to know how much snow is actually adding up. We got a little bit of a ocean effect um, mode going on right here south of Boston into southeast Mass. Let me know what you're actually seeing out there. Should be snowing. Could get a burst of heavier snow later on today. It could, it will likely accumulate to maybe an inch or two. But if you look right here throughout Pennsylvania, New York State, all the way into New Jersey, Long Island, we have just some scattered snow showers, snow flurries flying around. Could get a burst of snow in the Finger Lakes region. I mean, from Pittsburgh to Scranton to New Jersey, uh, some of this could mix with some uh, flakes down here in Maryland. And uh, we continue to just move through. And, and I really think as we get in this afternoon, some of this snowflake action could make it all the way into New York City. Could get some flurries flying around. Uh, you know, if you're out and about doing whatever you're doing, uh, same thing with Southern Ontario, some uh, snow shower activity. But if you look at this portion of your screen up here, we have more of a consolidated area of snow that's scooting down a little piece of northern stream energy. And this rides over Lake Huron, moves into southern Ontario. And then I think once we get into the overnight hours and we can still continue to deal with this lake effect snow in southeast Mass. But once this rides over uh, southern Ontario, Snow could, could begin to fall in Boston uh, well after midnight tonight. Erie, south of Boston. I'm sorry, south of Buffalo. I do apologize. Snow begins to fall in northwest Pennsylvania. And then we're waking up tomorrow morning with an area of moderate snow over a large portion of Pennsylvania. Snow potentially falling in northern West Virginia. And I mean, look at this snow getting to around the Philadelphia, the maybe the Baltimore area. I'm not Philadelphia, more so Baltimore, north of Washington, uh, D.C. And then, I mean, it's going to be interesting waking up tomorrow morning around the I-95 corridor here in the Delmarva, Maryland, Delaware. I will be interested to see how far south this snow gets, but it does show an area of snow making it all the way down to Delaware tomorrow morning. So we'll see what happens with this. I'm going to be highly interested to see. But a lot of just energy around. And we talked about this even last week. There was going to be a lot of energy over the Northeast. 
um, you know, this week. And, uh, you know, some of it at the surface has fallen in the form of some snow. So how much snow can we see between uh, now and um, tomorrow morning? Uh, look at the couple inches of snow showing up south of Boston. It's probably snowing right now. A couple more inches of possible in the higher elevations of West Virginia. And just trace the dusting amounts, maybe a half an inch throughout Pennsylvania. If you go all the way through about Thursday afternoon, you know, it adds up a little bit more in the northern counties of PA. Somebody could get an inch. It's very possible. And if we look at a little bit further north, um, I mean, if you live in the southern tier, the Finger Lakes region between now and midday tomorrow, an inch or two of snow is possible in these regions right here in western New York State. So uh, maybe enough to, to make everything white for sure. So uh, make the most out of that. Uh, but the south central U.S., it's a quiet day. I think this will change here in a couple of days. But, you know, we get into this afternoon, we get into this evening, we get into the overnight hours, getting into tomorrow morning. I mean, there's not a drop or flake of anything out there. Weather continues to be quiet, okay? I don't think it'll stay like this for long with uh, just an El Nino in place, but enjoy the quiet times for now. This morning, waking up to maybe a little flurry activity in southwest Michigan, northern Indiana. Could continue, could drift into Ohio. Then we see that energy kind of on the northern, the Canadian side of Lake Superior. And then we could get some snows that begin to fall, maybe a little bit here in the extreme eastern UP and then the northern lower Michigan area. And then that energy sort of flies in, might to get a little snow that could drift around here in eastern areas of Michigan overnight tonight. But most of this energy heads off into southern Ontario, uh, dumps maybe a few inches of snow on the ground, and then gets into the mid-Atlantic areas of the northeast as we get into tomorrow morning. Western U.S., I think it'll be the most active out here today, waking up to a stream of moisture, fire hose of moisture. But it's more so going into Oregon now as you have some troughing that's beginning to enter the pitcher in the western U.S. Therefore, the jet's digging a little bit further south. So as we're getting into about late morning, here comes the moisture riding into the northern coastline of California. Higher elevation snow. And then this pushes through, makes it all the way to uh, northern areas of Nevada. Uh, you get moisture that makes its way into eastern areas of Oregon, eastern Washington and then moves into Idaho, uh, Idaho, Idaho overnight. Higher elevation snow, lower elevation rain. Stay tuned to your local forecast for the snow levels. And then we're waking up tomorrow morning to just a lot of moisture around the Northern Rockies and Northern Cal up into Western um, Oregon and Washington. But the snow levels are lower. The Cascades, the snow is starting to add up again as the snow levels drop where you have a trough in place. So just more cold air in place, but you know, these look like thunderstorms riding into the coastline of um, the West Coast. So uh, lower elevation snow is possible with some of this, but yeah, a lot of moisture over this region. So how much rain could fall in Northern Cal between now and tomorrow morning? A couple inches of rain is possible against the Northern coastline of California. Lift from the higher elevations right in here in the Northern Sierra Nevada will provide more moisture in, this, in, in, in these areas. And then snow between now and the next 24 hours will begin to add up in Sierra Nevada, several inches of snow. Some of these higher peaks could get, you know, a foot, foot and a half of snow. And then we start to move a little bit further north. Just another wet day. Okay, this is between now and Friday morning. Okay, a few inches of precipitation is likely um, in these areas. Windy conditions. We look at the potential for snow in these areas. Snow levels are dropping, so then we're starting to get these outrageous snowfall totals again in the higher elevations of the Pacific Northwest. And then we just uh, we look at the Rockies. Precipitation between now and Friday morning starting to add up a little bit further east now. We look at the snow from this. Um, northwest, uh, Northwest Ohio, Yellowstone National Park, these higher elevations, notorious for a whole lot of snow. We'll begin to pick up even more snow over the next 48 hours. Idaho, same thing. But, you know, if you're in these lower elevations, kind of in the valleys of Idaho, not going to get quite as much with this. But snow even begins to add up in the higher elevations in Nevada um, and uh, Utah. So temperatures today. Um, chilly air mass in place with a d deep digging trough in place. So only 30s in the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes region, 30s, maybe just some 20s in some areas. Midwest, 30s and 40s. Mid-South, only 40s for highs. A very chilly day as far south as Alabama and Mississippi, North Georgia, cold day. And even in the southeast, a much chillier day. This will set up for a pretty cold night tonight. Sub-freezing temperatures for a lot of folks, even pretty far south. But it is 
very cold up here in the northeast a lot of the northeast will be locked in below freezing vermont new hampshire maine most of massachusetts except if you live up against the coastal regions a good chunk of new york state and even areas of pennsylvania right in the spine of the appalachian mountains sub freezing temperatures for highs today but as you can tell we'll move a little bit further west you can tell that this ridge is moving in place remember we talked about a ridge in the beginning of the video look at these temperatures in the middle of the country 60s and 70s so that is because you're under the influence of this ridge of high pressure overhead that, are, that and, and therefore the high plains the great plains are some of the warmest areas of the country for today 60s all the way up into montana um, it's it's definitely pleasant well above average temperatures starting to cool off a little bit more in the pacific northwest but i mean it's still pretty nice in the southwest so let's give you guys some updated information on the storm system on the way so there has been some changes there really has um and i would say these changes are favoring more of a wintry scenario now still that severe weather threat in place but let's just dive into this start off by looking at the european model if you're confused about the time frame we're at at all please look up here okay we're at, this is technically friday evening but we start to get into saturday morning here comes our first low pressure okay that rides along this trough this i don't think will bring much impacts maybe a severe weather threat for arkansas there's a marginal risk already up a weaker low pressure rides in this will bring some precipitation across the mississippi valley into the midwest and then some snow maybe into the upper midwest that moves through this trough continues to dig takes on more of an ominous tilt neutral then eventually to a negatively tilted trough you get a lot of rains that are just riding over kind of the east central areas of the country from the deep south all the way up into ontario uh, up in the areas of canada and then we have another low pressure that develops along this trough okay so uh, you have a low pressure that's developing this thing is deepening which means we have a strengthening wind field and we stop it here it's around sunday morning of course this will change somewhat we're still uh, a little over 100 hours out from the meat of this system sunday morning december the 10th we got snow rain changing the snow in areas of the ohio valley areas of the midwest okay northern kentucky indiana areas of ohio uh, you most likely have a wind driven rain very strong winds moving over areas of uh, west virginia just the appalachian mountains with this low pressure flying right overhead we keep this going you know we go all the way out to i would say this is sunday afternoon look at this cold air catching up with this moisture and all of a sudden you're switching to heavy wet snow kind of on the western side of the appalachian mountains and i mean even outside the mountainous regions ohio western pa south of buffalo west virginia all the way down to the, the spine of the southern appalachian mountains low pressure right here continues to go continues to deepen we probably have some sort of nasty line of storm south of this low pressure right here moving through areas in the mid-atlantic the upper portion of the southeast could have a line of storms overnight saturday night and sunday morning across areas of the southeast georgia the carolinas alabama there's a lot on the table here but then you start to get into late sunday evening look at this another low potentially develops and we have very heavy snow falling across west virginia higher elevations of virginia pennsylvania the whole entire western side of the state of new york um, and the cold air is trying to catch up with this and not just the euro but a lot of other model guidance likes the idea of more of a wintry scenario remember when i talked to you guys a couple videos back about how if you want snow for the northeast you need this to dig a little bit further uh, you need this to dig a little bit further east okay and you really don't need a low pressure to fly across the northeast well this is trended a little bit further east where a couple days ago it was looking like uh, the main low pressure was going to eject across like the mississippi valley or the mid-south or even you know give or take you know, a few hundred miles okay in this case it looks like the stronger low pressures stronger energy is moving across uh, basically further east so we keep this going we're getting into the middle of the night sunday night and the monday morning that is some extremely heavy snow falling across these areas right here okay at the same time on the warmer side 
a wind driven rain and i'm talking about the power outages as far as winds with this with a 991 millibar low pressure moving over and then this heads on out brings a lot of weather to start your work week next week for areas of new england and yeah then it heads on out okay what about the gfs what's the gfs showing this morning there's that first low pressure a little bit stronger than the european with the first load okay this gets into Saturday morning, potentially brings a stripe of snow for areas of Minnesota, definitely Wisconsin on the table here, the UP of um, the UP of Michigan. And this continues. All right, here comes this trough digging down. You see the blue line, that's cold air trailing. Here comes a load that develops right into here. Probably a lot of strong winds south of this low. You got strong winds, probably severe weather down here. Remember, this is just an operational run. It's not going to show you the detailed look of these storms. We got to get a little bit closer into the short range model for this. Getting into Sunday morning, another low potentially develops down here. Sort of enhances the precipitation for the Appalachian Mountains. Cold air trying to catch up with this. And here it is. Not as snowy as a scenario as the European, but it does switch the rain to snow across the higher elevations of the Appalachian Mountains. This low strengthening, this low strengthening, a lot of winds because of these strengthening low pressures. And, you know, there might not be actual dual low pressures here. It might just be one. Okay, sometimes the models throw a bunch of L's on the screen. But just in general, there's at least going to be probably two. Okay, one being the first one that probably moves over the Midwest, another along this trough that develops somewhere over the eastern U.S. But this continues. Um, we are getting into Monday, bringing a lot of weather, waking up and starting to your uh, work week next week. But, yeah, it's going to bring a lot. And you even look at the Icon, okay? Icon is probably the most aggressive run. We're looking at Sunday. We only can look at tropical tidbits here because Weather Bell does not show precipitation outlook here on what on um on the weather bell it does on tropical tidbits but it has a low pressure around thousand millibars moving over the uh, tennessee valley areas of the cumberland plateau just over the mid-south look at the rain changing the snow for indiana northwest ohio strengthening low pressure you probably have some sort of intense line of storms on going down here and uh, Alabama, Mississippi, you keep this going. And I can tell you the icon looks worrisome. You have a 994 millibar low pressure moving over the southern Appalachian Mountains. You have probably um, rain changing the snow in Tennessee. But on the other side of Tennessee, you have a wind-driven rain, probably a damaging wind threat. And, and look at these orange and yellows down here. This is probably some sort of nasty line of storms. I'm going to tell you guys right off the die. I, I really think with the severe weather threat with this, I don't think there's a gigantic tornado threat. So be careful what you listen to. I think this is going to have a lot of wind energy, an uncapped environment, and I think that you're going to have a significant wind threat with this. That's my take. Okay, we'll see how much that changes. I'm sure it will. <laughs> but low pressure continues to strengthen, gets to a sub-990 millibar low pressure over Western PA. Look at this backside snow. It's now showing snow all the way down into Tennessee, down to the Cumberland Plateau, snow all the way down to Kentucky, Ohio. And the same time, uh, this only goes out to the middle of the night, Sunday night, and Monday morning, okay? Latest icon only goes out 120 hours, but this is the beginning stages of a hefty wind event, wind-driven rain, wind rain event, very strong winds as we're moving Sunday night into Monday morning. Backside, very heavy snow falling back into Ohio, Kentucky, wild evolution based off the icon, uh, okay? I would say that the icon is the most dynamic, uh, the Euro is kind of right in between, and I would say the GFS is the least dynamic, but still a very strong system, okay? So moving here, let's talk about the winds. These are winds about 850 millibars, so that's equivalent to about four to 6,000 feet. We call this the low-level jet. All right, we, there is going to be a ton of winds with this, and we're just going to look at the Euro, which is kind of the middle ground model. First off, we're getting into <clears throat> we're getting into Saturday afternoon. Look at these winds. If you're wondering how fast are these winds, Mitch, over areas of kind of the east central section of the country, that's that's about a 40 to 50 knot low level jet. So that's winds about 45, 55, 60 miles per hour, about a mile or above our heads. So you're asking, what does that mean at the surface? Well, that means that we're probably going to have 35, 45 mile per hour wind gusts even outside of these storms. You don't even have to have a storm system. But what's worrisome here, as we're moving into Sunday, this low-level jet gets even larger, and then it gets stronger. So all of a sudden, you know, you're getting into Sunday morning, you're waking up to just 
whipping winds across the eastern U.S. And then you get into Sunday afternoon, guys, and you see these white colors here, kind of bright brown colors. That is a low-level jet pushing, guys. That's like 70 to 80 knots. Okay, that is, you know, pushing, you know, close to close to 100 miles per hour, about a mile above our heads up here. Okay, so that is very, very strong winds, and uh, it, it's definitely a, a concern. I would say it's one of my higher concerns with this event, with such a high-end kinematic field, kinematic meaning favorable winds, um, favorable wind energy with this system. Okay, so... I mean, it's just riding up the I-95 core. This continues to even strengthen even more, guys. I mean, we're getting into Sunday evening. This is a low-level jet pushing, I mean, just well over 75 to 85 knots. Yeah, just a lot of wind energy. Just, just leave it at that. This would bring widespread damaging winds to New England, New York City, to Boston, to Maine, if this was to occur. And I can tell you the models just continue to show it. Okay. Um, as far as potential wind gusts from the European model not terrible for the southeast 35 45 mile per hour wind gusts when it gets kind of worrisome is once you get up the I-95 cord into the Delmarva all the way up to Boston then from like you know Washington DC to Baltimore to Philadelphia to New York City closer to the coastline up to Boston all the way up to the down east areas of Maine you have scattered 45 to 65 mile per hour wind gusts and of course the higher elevations where the these you poke higher up in the in the atmosphere therefore the higher you up you get the stronger the winds and naturally when you're in the mountains you're higher up in the atmosphere so the winds are going to be stronger where the surface is on the mountains which is higher up a lot of wind energy with this okay and then you look at thermo <coughs> excuse me losing my voice then when you look at thermodynamics moisture in the atmosphere let's just focus on that it's not so much look at cape we know with this deep digging trough, it's going to pull in a lot of moisture out the south, out the Gulf of Mexico. So we're starting off a Friday evening. Dew points already climbing into the 60s. You can check that off as, uh, as far as moisture needed for a severe weather threat. Check it, okay, for a lot of these areas. And then you move into Sunday afternoon. Look at the, I'm sorry, this is Saturday afternoon. Look at this moisture. Dew points rising to the 60s all the way up to Memphis, almost all the way up to Nashville, Tennessee, the entire state of Tennessee, Alabama, getting into this warm, uh, warm and moist sector. And then kind of the last day, we're getting into Sunday, midday to afternoon. Dew points are climbing into the 60s all the way into the Carolinas, all the way up into the Delmarva region. And you have this mixed with a favorable wind field, the kinematic atmosphere, this is overlapping, probably creating some sort of ingredients that's probably driving right into some sort of line of storms. I would bet that this is going to be more of a linear threat, meaning a really nasty line of storms. That's my take on this severe weather threat. And then this continues. And yeah. So what about the Storm Prediction Center? What are they saying? They already have a marginal risk up for Friday. So just a level one out of five risk. This goes from Tulsa down to Little Rock, almost over to Oklahoma City. I don't think you guys in Oklahoma City are going to get much. All the way down to northeast at Texas, just a level one out of five risk. It's when we start to get into Saturday, where we've had a 15% risk over the last couple of days. We have a 15% risk of severe weather within 24, 20, 24, within, that's pretty exact, within 25 miles of any given location um, in this yellow area. It's basically a slight risk um, at day four, a level two out of five risk at day four. Okay, this has broadened a little bit. Um, as of now for day five, which is our Sunday, still says predictability too low. But I do think there will definitely be a severe weather risk for Sunday also, and maybe even into Monday morning for areas of uh, the southern New England region. So the severe weather risk with this is legit. How bad is it going to be? Be careful if you hear going to be a ton of tornadoes. I do think there'll be a tornado risk. I don't see this being like your um, supercells discrete mode with tornadoes. I see this being a big time damaging wind threat in my opinion as of now. I would say if I had to pick what's going to be worse, the tornado threat with a severe weather threat, um, the hail threat or the damaging wind threat, I would right now without hesitation say it's going to be the damaging wind threat. Okay. I'm trying to cut out saying, okay, if somebody said that I sound like a police officer when I say, okay, it's not me trying to <laughs> at like a, a professor or something or trying to give you guys a, um, a speed and ticket on the side of the interstate. 
that's just how I talk. Um, it's definitely, I hope none of you are getting uh, taking it to a fence, or I hope it doesn't annoy you too much. If I try to focus on not saying it, then I'll mess up the flow of my video, kind of like what I'm doing right now. But we'll keep going. Let's talk about the snowy side of this. We move throughout the weekend. Here it is. There's that signal showing up. You see how things increased. Take it all the way out to Tuesday afternoon. And you notice the signal has really increased for New York, Pennsylvania, and it has increased for the Appalachian Mountains. And, you know, it does increase for areas of the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes region. But this is trending right now. Hard to call it a trend, but I would, I would call it a trend. Trending more towards more of a wintry situation for areas further north. Okay, the GF, GEFS Ensemble, the GFS Ensemble, this is right now, and then here comes the system. You see how the numbers increase right there? That is your snow signal. Not totally, you know, groundbreaking or anything like that, but it is there. I'm not quite to the point where I'm comfortable showing just operational run snowfall totals because they change so much. We need to get a little bit closer. I'm not a big fan of that, um, but we, when we are closer, I will begin to compare what the models are saying as far as snowfall totals. So, guys, that's all I got. We'll do it again this evening. Um, even after this coming storm this weekend, um, I think that we're entering a, a period of activity that's going to stay like that for the foreseeable future. Could be wrong, but I think that this storm is kind of the gateway to an active period. I'm already watching another storm system potentially the weekend after this weekend, which kind of excites me because I'll be in the mountains. Uh, but some models have been teasing around the idea of some snow in the mountains, trying not to get my hopes too high. But, you know, that was always the plan when we planned this trip six months ago in Gatlinburg for somehow us to get magical timing and the snow in the mountains. We'll see what happens, but not going to be disappointed either way. But guys, that's all I got. I'm done rambling. You guys have an awesome Wednesday and I'll talk to you soon.